In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant us so to celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion that we may merit to receive your pardon through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear me, O islands. Listen, O distant peoples. The Lord called me from birth from my mother's womb. He gave me my name. He made of me a sharp-edged sword and concealed me in the shadow of his arm. He made me a polished arrow in his quiver. He hid me. You are my servant, he said to me, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Though I thought I had toiled in vain and for nothing, uselessly spent my strength, yet my reward is with the Lord, my recompense is with my God. For now the Lord has spoken who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him, and Israel gathered to him. And I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord, and my God is now my strength. It is too little, he says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. The, Lord. the response to the psalm is, I will sing of your salvation. I will sing of your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will sing of your salvation. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress, O oh my God. Rescue me from the hand of the wicked. I will sing of your salvation. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb you are my strength. I will sing of your salvation. My mouth shall declare your justice day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught, taught me from my youth. Until the present I proclaim your wondrous deeds. I will sing of your salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Hail to you, our King, obedient to the Father. You were led to your crucifixion like a gentle lamb to the slaughter. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. 
would be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Reclining at table with his disciples, Jesus was deeply troubled and testified. Amen, amen. I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another at a loss as to whom he meant. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter nodded to him to find out whom he meant. He leaned back against Jesus' chest and said to him, Master, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I hand the morsel after I have dipped it. So he dipped the morsel and took it and handed it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. After Judas took the morsel, Satan entered him. So Jesus said to him, what you are going to do, do quickly. Now none of those reclining at table realized why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas kept the money bag, Jesus had told him, buy what we need for the feast or to give something to the poor. So Judas took the morsel and left at once, and it was night. When he had left, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified and God glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and he will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. You will look for me, and as I told the Jews, where I go, you cannot come. So now I say it to you. Simon Peter said to him, Master, where are you going? Jesus answered him. Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, though you will follow later. Peter said to him, Master, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Amen, amen. I say to you, the cock will not crow before you deny me three times. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel reading today is quite sad. We see the moment when Jesus declares that he will be betrayed by one of his followers, one of his closest friends, one of the chosen twelve. And clearly, clearly, he was deeply bothered by this. The exact word is Jesus was deeply troubled. And who wouldn't be troubled by the betrayal of a friend? But it's not just Judas's betrayal that is featured in this gospel reading. It's also Jesus' prediction that Peter will deny him three times. Not once, not twice, but three times that very night. So this, in this moment, in this moment, we see Jesus grappling with a very painful, painful situation. Anyone who has felt rejected or been betrayed, anyone who has been denied by someone they are close to, has a, has a touch of the feeling of what Jesus experienced. And so we are deeply saddened by this gospel reading. But dear friends, as we journey through Holy Week with Jesus toward the moment of his crucifixion, we come to grapple with our own part in this drama. Because we realize that not only did Judas betray Jesus and Peter deny him, but in ways large, but most times in ways small, sometimes in our words, and in our actions, we have likewise 
betrayed and denied our Savior Jesus Christ. The one who does not call us servants, but who calls us friends. And this causes us great sadness as well that, that our Lord and Savior who came to be with us, who came to save us, who loves us more than we could ever imagine, who loves us unconditionally, who calls us a close friend. This Jesus we have failed in our own lives by the choices we have made when we have placed other things, money, possessions, uh, all other things, many other things before him and we betrayed him in this way. And we've denied him sometimes, afraid to be identified as a Catholic or Christian out of fear of criticism and many other ways in our daily life, we can end up making these same mistakes. It's important for us to recognize that we are capable of doing the same thing, of failing in these ways, so that we are able to be on guard. The minute we think that we are not able, that we will never for forsake the Lord or fall, that's when we are setting ourselves up for failure. We must be on guard. We must be vigilant. And even if or should we fail, dear friends, let us swiftly return to our Savior, Jesus Christ, and confess our sin and ask for his forgiveness. He is kind and forgiving from the cross. He asks the Lord to forgive us, for we know not what we do. That's the difference between these two men in our gospel reading. Judas would come to realize the error of his way, the mistake he made, but he will despair and end up taking his life. Peter, likewise, will realize the mistake he makes in denying Jesus. He will remember this prediction and he will be struck with deep sorrow, but he will not despair. In due, co due course, he returns to the Lord and testifies three times just how much he loves them. Brothers and sisters, let us never despair when we fall, but rather return to the Lord swiftly, clinging close to him test and telling him how much we love him and desire to serve him anew. Amen. In this time of the Lord's Passion, when Christ offered prayers and supplications to his Father with loud cries and tears, let us humbly beseech God that in answer to his Son's reverent submission, he may in mercy hear our prayers also, and our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests, especially those who feel they have toiled in vain and spent their strength for nothing in their love for God and God's people, that they may find everything again in the hands of the glorified Christ, anointed with his victory. Let us pray to the Lord. For the prophets, the sharp-edged swords, the polished arrows of God, who speak out for the right to life and human dignity, and that they may be heard and heeded, by our leaders. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are devastated by the betrayal of friends, co-workers, and family members, that Jesus, who understands their distress from personal experience, may sustain and comfort them. Let us pray to the Lord. For our dear departed ones, that the grace of the Paschal Mystery may absorb and transform everything it touches in their lives, with its healing and its glory. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us who in this Eucharist come into living contact with the heart of Christ like the beloved disciple, that Jesus may feel free to confide in us and know that we will be faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. For continued protection from this COVID-19 pandemic, that the Lord will lessen the number of cases among us and allow us to continue a more normal way of life. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord may, may strengthen our resolve to follow him as we walk with him to Calvary. Let us pray to the Lord. And finally, for our personal needs and intentions, 
that we make known to our God in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Be present, O Lord, to your people at prayer, so that what they do not have the confidence or presumption to ask, they may obtain by the merits of your son's passion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably, O Lord, we pray, on these offerings of your family, and to those you make partakers of these sacred gifts, grant a share in their fullness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the two fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Patrick, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church who graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are really present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I hunger to receive you. 
Since I cannot receive communion at this moment, feed my soul, at least spiritually. I unite myself wholly to you now as I do when I actually receive you. Permit me never to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you have fed us in this present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May your mercy, O God, cleanse the people that are subject to you from all seduction of former ways and make them capable of new holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever and ever. Go in peace. Thank you, Lord.